point I wanted to make. It might be hard to fathom, but could there be a few scenarios in which Sarah Palin, well, you heard a point of view just now like hers, could win the White House. Let's bring it in uh, with a fix. We're coming back on MSNBC. We're back with the politics fix. According to reports, Sarah Palin has sold 700,000 copies of her book, Going Rogue, in just the first week. Could book sales translate into votes in 2012? We're back with Ron Brownstein and, of course, Chris. So let me start with Chris this time. Let's go to the numbers here. Do these numbers represent base support within the Republican Party, especially the evangelical fundamentalist wing of the party in Iowa? Let's be particular here. Uh, yes, but... We're talking about 700,000 books. Uh, you know, I mean, I know a lot of people, uh, critics of Sarah Palin, Chris, who say, those are people who are buying those 498 books from Costco. And look, she sold 700,000 books. Let's give her, you know, some level of credit. Yeah. There's, a, there's an interest in her. Uh, you know, I think a lot of that is people want to read, buy that book and read everything they don't like about her. Some people want to read and, and have everything they do like about her affirmed. But like it or not, she is someone who drives interest, whether it's page views for, for my blog, whether it's ratings for cable news or whether it's book sales. There is a huge amount of interest in this one on both the good and the bad side. I wonder whether they actually read the book. Not that I'm knocking them. Some people buy books for iconic reasons. They want them on their shelf. They buy them to express loyalty. Uh, you know, a shelf value, if nothing else. Let me ask you that, Ron. I think buying the book is a commitment to her. I mean, that's 30 bucks in some cases. Right, sure. But 700,000 vote, 700, books versus, what, 70 million votes that you roughly now need to get elected president, certainly north of 65 million. Look, her profile could change perhaps between now and 2012, but right now she is the potential nominee of a coalition that no longer exists. I mean, she is primarily a candidate, I think, that, that, that attracts culturally conservative, hawkish, blue-collar white voters, non-college white voters. In 1992, those voters were an absolute majority of the electorate. They were about 53 percent. In this last election, they were down to 39 percent of the electorate. 26 percent was non-white, the first election in American history where more than a quarter of the vote was non-white. She has almost no appeal there. And 35 percent of the vote are these college-educated, white-collar whites who tend to be socially moderate uh, and with whom I think she has real hurdles. To some extent, you know, I think of her as uh, the famous uh, Bertolt Brecht poem after in East Germany in the 50s where she said the government would have to elect a new people. Uh, in some ways, she's either going to have to change her profile or create or elect a new electorate because the electorate that now exists is not one I think that would be uh, very favorable for her. Okay, what happens election. if she enters the Republican uh, caucuses in Iowa next time? She wins the Iowa caucuses in a four-way race. Uh, she yes. goes on and, and does decently well in New Hampshire and wins in South Carolina. Could she be the nominee that way? She Chris, could be the, I mean, look, Chris. Yeah, oh, sorry, God, Chris. yes, Chris, but but again, I think we have to separate it out. Could Sarah Palin be the nominee today? Absolutely. Could she beat President Obama today? No, she couldn't for all the reasons that Ron laid out. She has I think she has immense political potential that she has done almost nothing with since she was on the vice presidential ticket with uh, Senator McCain. She uh, in her book, it's largely a score settling book. There is not a lot of policy laid out in that book, it, it looks like she's doing it to further her own private ambitions, which is totally fine, but not her political ambitions. Ron is right. If she wants to be elected president of the United States, not head of the Republican Party, she needs to broaden her coalition. The problem with that... Well, this country's at, bet on vacuity before they might do it again. Thank you, well, Ron yeah. Brownstein. Thank you, Chris Saliza. Join us again tomorrow night at 5 Eastern for more Hardball. Countdown with Keith Oberman starts right now.